Hi, welcome to Tim's Desk. Um, today I'm going to do, instead of a review, this will be a comparison video. There's been quite a few reviews already for the Wingnut Wings DH2, uh, and there's, there is always some for the Roden DH2. But what I wanted to show you guys is the difference between them uh, side by side, what the detail difference is on them. Um, so you can get, get a judgment for what sort of kit, if you're doing do World War One planes, you want to go for, whether you want to go for the slightly cheaper Roden kits or spend the money to get on the wing nuts. Um, I'll show you the difference in the instructions, I'll show you the difference on the detail of the plastic uh, and then the quality of the kit as well. So let's get the instructions out and we can start from there. Okay, so to start out the instructions, they're quite different compared to the two kits. Both of them give you a good bit of information on the plane, on the front pages. Uh, you can see Rodents is very simple, black and white instructions. Uh, still quite well laid out, quite simple to build up. Breaks down the part section quite nicely, shows you the, the plans, or oh, a little piece of acetate in there, make sure I keep that safe to one side. So you get quite basic um, gun, seats, Engine, lower wheels, internals, uh, mounting the internals to the lower wing, mounting the top wing on, engine, rear tails, uh, mounting the wheels, and then that's it done. Now it does show you a rigging guide at the back, um, but that is a complete jumble, so you wouldn't be able to uh, use that as much of a guide, to be honest. Uh, it gives you a breakdown of Model Master paints down the bottom there, uh, and then gives you two different painting styles. I oh, sorry, no, one, one, two, three, four different painting options for that single kit on there. So they're quite basic, uh, shows you what you need to, to build the kit, doesn't give you anything more than that. Now compared to the Wingnuts kit, you got you get a small little pamphlet booklet with, with that one. Uh, as usual, colours at the start to mere humbrol. Um, I missed a kit, I've never heard of that paint book round four. Break down the parts. Uh, start with an nacelle, a uh, lot more detail compared to this one's got the internal framing where that the, the cap kit doesn't um, but you so you get your seats you get your uh, fuel tank that must be in the middle uh, you get to build up your engine mount that to the nacelle uh, some detailed pictures on there the real plane uh, mount it to your lower wings put in the struts around the top wings low on the carriage mount the rear booms the tail, choosing the propeller. This will start with your tail boom rigging. So you've got different types of rigging for different areas on there. Uh, making the machine guns up, mounting them on. Then goes on to rigging diagram, which then covers the rest of it. So you actually get two diagrams in there to do the rigging. These planes, these pusher planes are just seriously rigging. British airplanes were quite bad for rigging, but this one especially uh, is very heavy heavy on it. And then you get in this guide, you get one, two, three, four, five, five different planes markings you can do on that one. Uh, you get some with the with the light like khaki type finish and the metal frame. Uh, and then you get some, actually they're, they're all pretty much, much the same except the main body. Some of them are in the all silver, some are slightly painted on there. And then the last one is the brown and khaki colour on them. Now, if you are getting the Roden kit, the one good thing is these Wing Nut Wings instructions are all online on their site. So if you need to know the rigging, you need to get an idea of colours and stuff like that, you can go to their site. I don't know if it's printable, uh, but you can go to their site and view all of their instructions completely. So... Although you, yeah, you, you can buy the Wingnut Wings, you get these wonderful instructions. Even if you buy the cheaper kit, you can go to their site, be a bit cheeky, and use their instructions to help you build build that kit. Um, now, what I am going to quickly go through are the decals you get. So, the Wingnut Wings, you get a slightly larger sheet there. So, you get a few different markings. You get to see where it's, it's the top and lower wing markings are split. Uh, you get some decals for the seat, uh, for the wheels there, sorry. Uh, all your markings and then all the very small additional uh, labels and for, these for, like, for the propeller, the wheels and items like that. And you've got instruments down the bottom and a few 
serial numbers on the side there. These are done by Cartograph from Italy, so you can know they are very thin, wonderfully uh, printed, and they'll go down absolutely lovely. The Roman ones, a lot more simple, not as much detail. You get a few items here, you do get some um, dial decals there, you do get some markings, but you can see the difference in the amount of options and small detail markings quite quite different in the in the wing nuts kit so yes yeah, so that's where your money's being spent on that one getting the extra decal markings these are still good um not as good as cast graph ones um these have got a little bit bashed over time as they've been in the packet they've got a few little marks but they still would absolutely come off well nice color and they're still printed very thinly so I must say that still, the rodent decals still are very good uh, and still very easily usable for that kit. Um, so let's get the boxes open and have a look at the plastic. Okay, so to start off with the plastic, um, in the rodent kit you get five sprues, in the wing nut kits you get six sprues. Um, now I'm not going to go through every single part, as I say, there's, there's already reviews of these kits out there. Um, I want to pinpoint certain specific items which will show you quite the de the difference with the styles of kit um now one of the most obvious areas of these pusher planes oh, and world war two, uh, one planes are the propellers uh, now this is the roden sorry wing nuts item on there uh it's got quite an obvious square center to the propeller it's got some very fine nice detail on the tips for like a uh, in case it gets hit it protects like a metal guard on the end of the edge of them there uh, so that's quite a nice propeller the rodent one's quite different it does have the detail on the tips there uh, but this is quite a round center one now i don't know if it's the difference between of different type of blade there was quite a lot of blades uh, made by different companies so it could be just it's just diff a different style that they had copied on there um, another their main point is the nacelle for the front end uh, to start up with a rodent one. Uh, so these side pieces here would have been fabric on there. It does have detail for the stitching along the edges, which is quite nice. Uh, but what I can see on this are a lot of sink marks. There's what a real quite a big one in that front section there. There's one in the middle of the canvas there and there uh, so that is definitely going to need a bit of uh, work to get those looking good uh, turn it over uh, this comes with the ribbing on the inside uh, what is a shame are these ejector pin marks they're really quite big and nasty unfortunately on the sides there you can clean them up you would be able to remove these with a bit of work in there um, you probably have to replace some of the uh, rigging for the internals and some of these points because they would uh, you'd have to lose them to get rid of the injector pin marks but with a bit of modeling skill that is doable and you'll be able to tidy that up with near no problems um, let's have a little look the wing that's one and you can see the difference I'll try and get that in the so you can see the strip it's got the still got the stitching around the edges much finer detail on the on the stitching on there it's quite hard to actually pick up there we go what you also see is they've actually put in the molds some stretching on the fabric and some um, like ruffles on the edges there which is quite nice it, that that is exactly how they looked on the real plane so that's quite a nice a bit of added detail on there and then this is the end then the internal bracing which was made in on the rodents so that's there that's the piece there you still got to put the uh sorry the rigging that's the actual strength thing you still have to put the rigging on those pieces uh turn that over these do have some injector pin marks there but they they'll be in an area where you can't see them because that's where the seat goes and you get still get a bit of stretch detail on the inside there's quite hard to pick up but there's a stretch fabric detail on the internals which is very nice very nice indeed. The rear booms for the tail sections, they're not on this one, I'll grab the other sprue in a minute. 
you get some very fine detail for the joins there. There's little loops where the rigging will be going through for that tail area. Uh, you've got a nice padded seat, a bit of detail on there. Uh, so let me grab the road and sprue with the rear arms. Now they are, it, it's still it's still well detailed, but it hasn't got the little loops there for the rigging. So you'd have to either stick them directly onto the tops or make a little eyelet there to glue them in. Uh, this comes with machine gun details and the, the struts, which is, which is actually very well detailed. It, is, it has got the detail at the end. It's not just a straight piece of plastic. There is little mounting detail and it has got little notches to where the rigging will go, um, but you'd have to be very finely Fine and careful when sticking those onto those final points. Because there you have to have a look at the, the wing nuts. I've thought a little bit and put a loop in there, which is mighty handy. Um, hello there, there's the engine. Let me have a look, look at the engine. I'm gonna open this bag up. There we go. So with the wing nuts kit, you get two halves. You have to join them together. Nicely detailed ribs. On the cooling jackets for the main engine there and then all these other little parts of this, the sections that go on there the rodent one comes all in one piece so you don't have to worry about the join so that's, that's quite a good little piece of detail on there you don't have to worry about the join between the cylinder heads which helps because like i could say that's going to be a hard work to clean up Yeah, nicely detailed engine there. Uh, that's a good point for Roden there. Very good point for Roden. Uh, where the wing nut ones, unfortunately, you're going to have to join those two halves together. So that's going to be a bit more tricky to uh, make clean and nice and neat. Which is a shame. But hey, we can't we can't get perfect everywhere, can we? Now, the last area I'm going to show of the main wings for them. There's the rodent items. And then there's the wing items. Now, as you can quite clearly see, the rodents have the flaps molded in. Uh, if you wanted to show them uh, a, a tilted or any way you'd have to then cut them off and re-stick them on the wing nuts comes with them pre-cut so you've got to glue them on uh, what you can do is pin them and you can have them uh, angled down which is quite a nice little bit of added detail on there the ribbing detail is mighty fine on these wing nuts kits they, they've got all the metal uh, bars across them the little rivet heads for them uh, no sink marks. There's some dips there which are sh to show the canvas on them. But other than that, there's there's no problems on those at all anywhere. Now the rodent ones, the pla the plastic's a bit odd. It's quite nice and shiny, and it does show the detail of the ribs on there. So it's slightly dipped, so you can you can get that idea there. But the plastic's quite shiny at the front and then quite rough at the back, so it's going to need a bit of a prep and work on that one. Yeah, so we're going to need a bit more sanding down and a bit of detail, a bit of uh, work on there just to get that nice before when you're painting it up. They're quite they're quite heavy these wings. They're quite thick plastic. They haven't got you haven't got to join two halves together on them. So that's quite. That's, that's quite on both of them. They'll be quite. They'll be quite heavy sections on there. Uh, these are the the spars for the wings, and there's the center for the wheel, and there's the other propeller. Give me a little bit of card behind there. There's the other propeller. That you get options for on the wing nuts kit. Nice. So yeah, that's a. Uh, extremely good detail on the wings uh rodan's lacking a bit of detail or need polishing up to make that to paint that plastic a little bit nicer so final thoughts to these two 
wing nuts out the box does have the better detail you get the external flaps you get the option uh, the ability to put the rigging through little loops if thought through for that part so that's really quite good the rodent is a little rough in there some areas there is some evidence of flash on quite a few of the parts so they're going to need cleaning up um the wings are a little bit rough and they're going to need some cleaning to make them slightly nicer what you need you're going to need to do is add the rib detail probably with um something very thin across the edges there to actually show that because it is it is missing on the kit but with some work the road and the kit can come up to, will be able to come up to a very nice little kit built up um the wing nuts kit will need work in different ways it won't need hard work it'll just need time spent to make it uh build up well because there's a lot of detail on there the instructions you can you saw were very very basic in the road and like i said if you do buy the road and you want the extra detail that the wing nuts kit instructions have go to their site or the pictures and images are there so it will help you if when you're rigging this model so the difference price wise the, unfortunately this one's actually out of production now um and they were selling for around about 115, 120 pounds, these DH2s. Uh, so they, they're not a cheap one. Uh, this Rodan DH2, you can pick up for around about 30, 35, 40 pounds around that mark. Um, it is well worth buying the Edward X set. So that'll probably knock you back another 10 to 15 pounds for the extra detail on there. Um, so you, you are making a saving, but you have to spend time in a different way. So it depends what how you how you feel your skill levels at, and or what what type of work you want to put into it. Um, both will build up into a nice little display piece. As these pusher planes were extremely um, iconic for the style. The no one else except the Royal Air Force had them at the time. So it's it's a it's a brilliant looking plane to build up. Um, so I've I've now I've got my wing nuts one. Uh this Roden one I'm actually gonna send to a friend. I'm gonna let him have this one and he can build that up. Uh I know he likes the challenge. So he can he can you can have that one and he can enjoy building it. And I hope to have be building up this DH2 uh soonish. Not sure when, many projects in the pipeline. Um I hope this has been informative to the two differences between the types of kit. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments. Uh thank you for watching, have a good day.